The Kalispell Warhawk Dynasty was one incredible journey. Over the course of 14 seasons, we saw the evolution of a dynasty. It all began with a small school in Montana with a brand new football program. We all knew that in the beginning, this was going to be a major challenge. But we had to embrace the role of the underdog and go out there, play aggressive, and give it our best shot. And we did that from our very first game. I wanted Warhawk football to be exciting whether we won or lost. And there was a lot of losing in the beginning. But we had to find out who the leaders of this team were. Who would lay the foundation for years to come. And this process took some time. There were a lot of tough games in the first two seasons, and we were up against some of the top teams in the country who were excited for a matchup against the Warhawks. But every team has to start somewhere. I think we all wondered when that first victory would come, and thankfully, it didn't take forever. This team had some playmakers, and we began to build the offense around quarterback Marquise Walker, and things began to fall into place. Our first victory came against a team that would ultimately become our first rival in Hawaii. And we got that win in our fifth game in team history. Despite the lack of success in those first two seasons, you could tell we were building something. After going 5-19 in those first two years, those who were at Kalispell on day one had the experience. And then, through recruiting, we took this team to another level. Playmakers from all around the country came to Kalispell, and the transformation of Warhawk football was well underway. After two seasons of laying the program's foundation, we took the college football world by storm in our third year, and that led us to our first ever conference title game against our rivals, Hawaii, in what was an incredible defensive football game. And it was linebacker Zach Flowers making one of the biggest plays in team history that gave us the first trophy in the trophy case, that Mountain West Conference Championship. My favorite part about this season is that we became a winning team before those original Warhawks had their college careers come to an end. That third season surpassed all of my expectations. We went from winning five games in two years to ten victories in our third year in team history. We won the Mountain West title and we got to end the season with our very first bowl victory. It was an amazing way to end the careers of those seniors. That led us to the next era of Warhawk football. There's change in college football, we learned that pretty quickly. And with brand new players, a brand new quarterback in JR battle, Kalispell became a true force in the Mountain West Conference. We added even more trophies to the trophy case, winning bowl matchups in three consecutive years, by year five's conclusion, we already had three bowl titles and a conference championship. We had become one of the top teams in the conference. Then it was time to become one of the top teams in the country. Year seven is where things really started to get fun. During this era, we brought in some of the best recruits in team history. This was easily the most iconic era of Kalispell football. Hayden Jean Charles and Boogie Turner became two of the best players in team history and would go on, of course, to have dominant NFL careers. And quarterback Brandon Warren really helped us take this offense to a level we had never seen before. We recruited him as an athlete and there was a time where I thought he would end up playing some wide receiver for us. Thankfully, he played the vast majority of his career at quarterback and helped rewrite the record books for Kalispell football. And so did Hayden Jean Charles, who was just one of the most fun, dominant players we ever had. And that really wasn't the expectation of him when we recruited him. Year 7 was a special year. We went undefeated through the regular season. 
won the Mountain West Conference title for the third time, but did not get invited to the national championship game. Instead, as the number three ranked team in the country, we were invited to play in the Rose Bowl against Big Ten champions Penn State. And while we were disappointed we did not make it to the national championship game, this became one of the most unforgettable games in the entire dynasty. We had an undefeated season on the line, going up against first round draft prospect, quarterback Oliver Raymond, and Penn State. And this game went back and forth, it was a close battle the entire way, neither team was able to pull away. And it came down to the final minute, Kalispell up 21-17, trying to hold on to this late lead with time running out. Penn State was just a couple of yards from taking the lead, but these yards weren't easy to get against this dominant Kalispell defense, and this was ultimately going to come down to one final play. And it's one of the greatest plays in team history, the goal line stand inside the one that gave us the Rose Bowl title and completed the one and only perfect season in Kalispell football history. It had one of the most unbelievable finishes in the dynasty and it's definitely in my top two or three memories of this series. After this year, I knew it was time for a new challenge. We left the Mountain West Conference and joined the Pac-12. We would face much tougher competition and have a chance to compete for a national championship. And we showed right away we were ready for this jump in competition. Our offense could put on a show against these Pac-12 defenses and our defense was still getting better. Kalispell football wasn't going anywhere. But we did find one team that was proving to be our greatest challenger. Playing against Stanford was a bit of a wake-up call. If we're going to play more of the top teams every season, we still need to get better. For most of the season, our offense was a highlight reel on a week-to-week -week basis. That was not the case against Stanford. But this loss, I think, helped us. You learn a lot going up against better teams. And if we're going to become one of the best teams, we had to beat teams who have already been there and done that. We took on Alabama that season and put together a really nice performance against the Crimson Tide. And ultimately, in our first year in the Pac-12, we earned a spot in the Pac-12 Championship. I wasn't sure what to expect from our first year, but we built upon the progress of our 14-0 season and our ultimate goal was now within reach. Up against UCLA, the offense played really well and it was the defense helping seal it, giving Kalispell their first Pac-12 title and their fourth overall conference championship. Unlike the previous season, we got a chance to play in the national title game. And it got off to an exciting start with Brandon Warren finding Hayden John Charles for a 60-yard touchdown, putting the Warhawks in front. But later in the first half, Brandon Warren would have his day ended on a scramble. This meant that Justin Colbert would step in, and his clutch performance late in the game helped Kalispell get in position to win their first national championship. The Rose Bowl came down to the final minute, the national championship would as well, and the Warhawks emerged victorious again. Eight seasons of building this program, and Kalispell had climbed to the mountaintop of college football. We had two incredible seasons back to back. The next step for the Warhawks was to truly make this a dynasty. After another dominant season and another Pac-12 championship, Kalispell found themselves in the national championship for the second straight season, up against Penn State in a rematch of the Rose Bowl from two years before. We still had the same quarterbacks in this matchup, and it was another unbelievable game. 
Oliver Raymond wanted to avenge that loss and end his college career with a big national title win. And everything was falling into place for Penn State late in the ball game. After the critical interception of Brandon Warren, Oliver Raymond ran in a touchdown to put the Nittany Lions up two scores. Down by 12, Kalispell wasn't going to back down. Warren hit Justin Payne for a long touchdown to put Kalispell back within a score. They just had to get the football back. But that's easier said than done against Raymond and this Penn State offense. They answered right back, going up again by two scores with just a couple minutes to play. So in our last chance to make this a ball game, Brandon Warren found Hayden John Charles for a touchdown. And with less than a minute to go, now it was Kalispell having to score. Brandon Warren took us down to the 10. We had to get this in the end zone, and it was Reggie Jackson with the score, pulling Kalispell within two points. We had the goal line stand two years before. Now we had to get the final yards if we wanted the chance to win. And that led to the biggest two-point try in team history, and Tyrone Houston barely broke the plane converting. This is an incredible play by Houston, one of the biggest he made in his career. That's how close it was. So we went to overtime against Penn State. Kyle Thomas inside the 10 got us very close to the end zone, and we would bring in Marcus Payne, who had an awesome year, to cap it off and put us up by a touchdown. So of course Oliver Raymond had to go and tie the game, but the defense looked to clutch up and seal this. Fourth down and 13, Penn State had to get at least inside the 15. Raymond wanted to tie the game and got intercepted by Chris Baker, giving us our second consecutive national title win. Three years of dominance for Kalispell, an unbelievable run. And Brandon Warren was our quarterback for almost this entire run. And even after this close to his junior season, he would come back for one more year. We made it to our third straight national title game. It would be Brandon Warren's finale up against Clemson. The first two national championships were all about the late game drama. This game was going to be a little bit different. Warren broke off this 80 yard touchdown in the first quarter. And that was only the beginning. The Clemson defense just was not ready. And Brandon Warren saved his best for last. The highlight touchdowns built us an early first half lead. But Warren just kept building it even further. With under a minute to go in the first half, Warren found tight end Thomas Roberts for his fourth touchdown pass of the half. He didn't even have an incompletion at this point. We kept getting the football back from Clemson, and Warren scored again! Deep ball this time to Thomas Roberts. Three touchdown passes in around 90 seconds. And how about one more for good measure, showing off the arm strength to Antoine Knightley. He tied his school record of six touchdown passes. He had the rushing score as well. What a way to end his career. With Brandon Warren as our starting quarterback, we won the Rose Bowl and three national championships. Replacing him was not going to be easy. And the following season got off to a very tough start. We went to Minnesota for a non-conference game in week two. And Minnesota just destroyed us. New starting quarterback Luke Irvin did not have a very good game against the Gophers. And the defense that had dominated for the previous four seasons was showing some serious signs of regression. We only lost four games in the previous four years. But lost two out of three to start this season. It sure looked like Kalispell's dynasty run was over. When you lose two games early in the season, there's no more room for error. But Kalispell showed resiliency, bouncing back in Pac-12 conference play. 
Luke Irvin got comfortable in this revamped offense that had to change considerably after four years of having Warren be the starting quarterback, and the defense was just fine. We had dominant front four pass rushers and playmakers in the secondary. Jamari Akinjide had become a fan favorite and showed he can even play a little bit on the offensive side of the football. The Warhawks got back to their dominant ways. And this defense was a lot of fun to watch. All they did is make plays every single week. Quarterbacks did not enjoy going up against us. We had to climb back up the rankings a little bit, but before too long, we were once again ranked with the top teams in college football, not ready for this era to close quite yet. We had more signature performances in this season, including the 304-yard record-breaking day for Austin Jenkins. And as the captain of the defense, Jamari Yakinjide had an excellent season. We would go back to the Pac-12 title up against USC, and it was a dominant showing for the Warhawks. We captured our third Pac-12 title in four years, and we're set to make it to the national title game for the fourth consecutive season. This time, we were up against the Florida Gators, and they ran an option offense that kept our defense off balance the entire day. We hadn't seen an offense like this the entire year, so we struggled early on. And we needed somebody to step up in the second half, and Sherrod Edwards did just that with this spectacular 75-yard touchdown. Kalispell closed the gap, and later in the third quarter, Luke Irvin with a phenomenal play found Edwards again, and the Warhawks took a lead. But Florida came back in the fourth quarter. They had to bring in multiple backup quarterbacks in this game because of injury and even had to play a running back at quarterback. But this was one of the most versatile offenses we had ever seen. I was in awe the entire game. This national championship went down to the final minutes and Florida with a big sack fumble of Luke Irvin put themselves in a position to win. The defense came up big to ensure we'd still have a chance in this one. But we were going to need at least a field goal and we had a minute to go and get it. Florida's defense played really tough and they blitzed a lot, getting unblocked defenders and making key plays on these final possessions, leaving us with almost no time to go. On 4th and 12, Irvin delivered a huge throw to Nick Lindsay and he got out of bounds, which would at least give us a chance at a Hail Mary to win the game. But it was the Florida Gator defense coming up big in the end and ending our run of dominance. After four seasons of winning three conference titles, a Rose Bowl and three national titles, we had finally been conquered. Florida played an unbelievable game and many of those players on their offense ended up going pro. Of course, in year 12, we wanted to avenge that loss. We played Texas in an early season non-conference matchup, and the Longhorns just annihilated us. We played a really awful game against them, and that gave us a big early season defeat. That game served as another wake-up call, and we got right back on track. We had a defense full of playmakers, some of my favorite players here in team history, like defensive end Trey Walker, who had a breakout campaign. This year was a really down year for the Pac-12 Conference as a whole, and we dominated pretty much every team that got in our way. Most of the games this season weren't competitive whatsoever. Our defense was just way too good. Other teams struggled to get two touchdowns against us, and while our offense wasn't what they once were, they were plenty good enough to win with the defense holding teams under 20 points on a routine basis. So we won easily the rest of the year, but a scheduling issue where I did not have us play against Stanford at all kept us from winning the conference. 
we lost one game, Stanford was undefeated. So they got to go to the conference championship instead of us. We play in the same division. So no national title even after an 11-1 season. And that brought us back to the Rose Bowl once again, now to match up with the Ohio State Buckeyes. And like most of these big games, it went down to the final minute. Ohio State got in position to tie the game and we would have overtime in the Rose Bowl. We would get the football first, and Luke Irvin connected with Sherrod Edwards for a 24-yard touchdown to put us in front. The Buckeyes look to answer, and that door was slammed shut by cornerback Nick Robinson, who won it with the interception, giving Kalispell their second Rose Bowl title. This was our fifth season winning at least 12 games, and our seventh in a row winning 11. We might not have won a national championship, and now it had been two years since we won a title, but this was still a dynasty. In year 13, we were no longer in the Pac-12, going independent to create our own schedule. And we faced some of the classic rivals from the series and had one of the biggest surprises of the entire dynasty being upset by Boise State in overtime, 50 to 44. This season was the most we had struggled in a decade. We lost four games in this season, but I did make sure Stanford was on the schedule and we were at least ready for this matchup. Finally getting some points on the Stanford defense in a high scoring game for a change. And it was our defense sealing this one, our first ever win against Stanford. It took four matchups against the Cardinal to get our very first win, but we finally defeated them on senior day. We ended up winning a bowl game that year and the following season, would return to the Rose Bowl once again in the last year of the dynasty. With this set to be our final game, it could not have gotten off to a worse start. We were turning the football over, Utah was driving down the field, and before we knew it, we were down 21-0 in the first half. But if this was going to be our last game, there's no way we were going to let it be done there. We were going to fight back. After scoring our first touchdown, we quickly got possession again, and freshman running back Matthew McNair scored a 20-yard touchdown to bring us within a score. Utah was moving the football once again, but a big strip sack on quarterback Eric Bates led to a Stan Carter scoop and score touchdown. We erased the 21-0 lead before halftime. This blowout became another game that would go down to the wire. And the Warhawks captured the lead in the fourth quarter with a Josh Vincent touchdown, putting Utah down with four minutes to go. But they would get down the field again. An incredible catch by Michael Richardson got them close, and they would tie the game with a Pierre Wright touchdown. Luke Irvin, playing the final game of his college career, began the two-minute drill, and the Warhawks worked their way downfield. With time on our side, we quickly got across midfield and looked to set up the game-winning field goal. Behind Jim Jackson's power running, we looked to run as much of the clock out as we could. We kept getting first downs and ultimately set up kicker Brandon Hammond for the game-winning field goal. And the Kalispell Warhawks became three-time Rose Bowl champions, and year 14 ended in dramatic fashion. It was the end of an unbelievable 14-season run, and the end of the Kalispell Warhawks dynasty. We accomplished a lot in these 14 seasons. Conference titles, bowl victories, national titles. All of the great players who broke records and went on to the pros. There were so many great games and great memories from this series. And I'm happy to have shared this experience with all of you.
After 14 great seasons, it was time for me to leave Kalispell football. Expectations remained high as Kalispell was set to begin a brand new era, and I would now be watching this team from afar. It's time now for me to tell you the story of the 15th season of Kalispell Warhawk football. We of course have to begin right at the end of season 14, the very next off season. Once again, Kalispell was graduating an extremely talented class that the NFL had a lot of interest in. Not only that, but three underclassmen declared for the draft, and two more decided to transfer away from Kalispell. This is a lot of talent to lose in one season, as Kalispell sent a number of first round picks to the NFL that are already making an early impact in their careers. Kalispell was now looking for a new quarterback, new playmakers, and offensive coordinator Joe Rudolph left for Florida Atlantic to become their new head coach. Leon Daniels then brought in Pittsburgh offensive coordinator Calvin McGee, who was excited to get to work with new quarterback Antoine Morgan. As far as recruiting goes, Kalispell didn't bring in a lot of players in this recruiting class, but they brought in a lot of highly ranked players, including wide receiver Randy Harrison and outside linebacker Zachary Gilbert. However, it wasn't expected that most of these freshmen would make an impact early on. Kalispell, after a couple years of playing independent football, then decided to go back to the Pac-12 conference to reignite some of those rivalries and again compete for conference championships. Despite all of the change with Kalispell football, it was expected that they'd still be one of the best teams in the nation, coming in as the number one ranked team in the preseason polls, along with having one of the nation's top home field advantages. If they were to match these expectations, they would need a big season from senior quarterback and first year starter Antoine Morgan, who came into the year with only 30 career pass attempts, having backed up Luke Irvin for a few years. Morgan was definitely ready for this opportunity, especially because there were still some great playmakers to help him in his senior season. Phoenix Chambers returned as a junior to become the top receiver taking over for NFL first round pick Sherrod Edwards. The player I was most excited about was sophomore running back Matthew McNair coming off a tremendous freshman campaign. I had no doubt he was about to become a college football superstar. I was still confident in the defense as well as Kalispell has recruited well for a number of years and I expected great things from their pass rush and secondary, led by DeHonte Jeffries coming off a big six interception season as a sophomore. The big questions for this team were how would Antoine Morgan play in his one and only chance to be a starter at Kalispell, and what would this offense look like with new coordinator Calvin McGee, who was set to bring in his pass-heavy offense to Kalispell Something we've never seen the Warhawks run before. I completely believed in the talent this team had, but would this new offense be successful and could the Warhawks really match the preseason hype? Year 15 for Kalispell got off to a successful start before they played a single game already landing one of the top offensive line recruits in the country, getting an early commit from Ronnie McDonald. Here was the year 15 schedule that would have them playing four early road games to start their Pac-12 schedule, and opening against Pittsburgh, the team Calvin McGee left to join Kalispell. Everyone wanted to see how Kalispell would begin this brand new era, and this game was a prime time nationally televised matchup. And it got off to a start that nobody expected. Calvin McGee couldn't come in and just run his regular offense against his old team. They had to switch it up from the very beginning, busting out a little flex bone fullback dive 
and a 69-yard touchdown for the freshman fullback, Ryan Thurman. That was the first play of the entire season. What a call for Calvin McGee and an exciting start to year 15. As exciting as that was, everyone wanted to know how Antoine Morgan would play. We expected this team to throw the football a lot, spread the football around, and we would see Morgan's accuracy and high football IQ on display. Well, once they let him throw the football, good things began to happen for this offense. He found Matthew McNair, Phoenix Chambers on this possession, and his first touchdown pass in his career went to tight end Craig Booth, who rumbled in to put Kalispell up two scores. Unfortunately, the scoreboard stopped working for a while, but eventually that got fixed. And that was going to be pretty important as Kalispell's offense looked to light up the scoreboard in the first half. Josh Vincent, one of my favorite returning players, takes this catch and run in for Kalispell's third first half touchdown. Morgan with an 8 of 9 start, two quick scores. It's everything we wanted this first half to be for the offense. But it wasn't like Pitt was just going to back down. Going deep here on first and 10, they connect. Brian Brock with a 43-yard touchdown, and Pitt made this a 21-14 game. They played really hard in the first half, but Kalispell would eventually make some plays on defense. That's Montrell Griffin stepping into a major role this season. Kalispell set to get the football back after that sack, and a muffed punt would give the football back to Pitt with a chance to go and tie the game. It was Travis Clemens who muffed the punt, giving Pitt a short field, but another sack would give the football back to the Warhawks as they generate the sack fumble. Montrell Griffin recovered it and he had a tremendous season debut. Kalispell got the football back wanting to increase this lead a bit further and Antoine Morgan continued to deliver perfect throw one after another showing that he could throw to all areas of the field. It was a ton of fun to watch. Kalispell got back down to the red zone. A little pitch here to Matthew McNair and that put the Warhawks back up by two scores. With the game slipping away from Pitt, they tried to keep this game close. But Montreal Griffin's dominance would not allow them to make this competitive in the second half. A four-sack week one for Montreal Griffin. And then Morgan's debut on the offensive side just kept getting better. Touchdown here to Josiah Jensen. Third of the day for Antoine Morgan. He went over 300 yards. And he sure looked good running this heavy pass attack. It looked like Calvin McGee knew exactly what he was doing with this offense. If you followed the Kalispell dynasty, you know you can't tell this story without talking about the dominant tradition of pass rush. Boogie Turner, Trey Walker, Brock Schultz, so many great pass rushers and a signature performance here in week one by Montrell Griffin and the entire defense helping seal a big week one win at home on national TV. It's exactly what you hope to see when a season kicks off, especially after an off season that brought so much change. Kalispell played phenomenal in week one and they started 1-0. In the second game of the season, Kalispell, as heavy favorites, was set to host Central Michigan, a team that allowed 49 points in their opener, and Kalispell's offense looked to pick up where they left off. After throwing for over 300 yards in his debut, Antoine Morgan got off to a very slow start, with the Central Michigan defense playing some inspired football. The Warhawks offensive line was completely overwhelmed as Antoine Morgan took multiple hits. He was sacked twice by Keith Smith in the first quarter and on one drive where Kalispell actually got down the field, Morgan threw his second pick of the season. Trying to force one into tight coverage, keeping this game tied at three. At the same time, the Kalispell defense played exactly how you would have expected. Central Michigan wasn't supposed to score a lot but we were. I thought maybe Kalispell would get something going at the end of the first half, 
But Antoine Morgan was not comfortable and went into halftime with only 80 passing yards. In the second half, after a second field goal, Kalispell had a slim lead and kept playing punishing defense. The pass rush appeared to be one of our greatest strengths early in the season. Scoreboard went out again, that was very convenient. Kalispell still up at this point, and Morgan continuing to take hits. Thankfully, this doesn't become a turnover. Kalispell still with a chance to add some points. Maybe a chance for their third field goal of the day. On a third and 16 screen pass, Kalispell gets the perfect blocking setup for Mark Robinson to take it down inside the 10 yard line. A much needed conversion, but could the Warhawks get their first touchdown? On a rollout pass, Morgan hit once again. Hit after hit. Central Michigan playing outstanding defense in this game. On a long third and goal, Kalispell made it close. Derek Jackson to the two, but another stand for Central Michigan as this game would go to the fourth quarter, 12 to three, with no touchdown scored to this point. As well as their defense has played, Central Michigan had to score some points. This helped them out. A flip out to Brian Hickman, a 22-yard run. That put Central Michigan in range to at least make it a one-score game. George Thompson with a throw inside the 15 gave them a red zone trip against a defense that's always strong in the red zone. But on first and goal... Flipping this for the touchdown, that is Mike Johnson making it a one-score game. On that play, starting quarterback George Thompson took a hit that took him out of the rest of the game with an injury. That made it a 12-10 game. Coach Leon Daniels was not happy. He wanted to put this team away. So it was up to the offense to finally wake up. And Antoine Morgan looked to get them on track. Here's a nice throw to the outside, looked to be a first down, and all of a sudden it's coming back due to a late clipping penalty. One of the latest calls I've ever seen, that wiped out the entire play. On the very next play, a second and 19, right off the hands of Craig Booth. The offense just could not get it together. Backed up, facing third and a mile. Antoine Morgan just heaving it outside and getting a conversion. That's the freshman Dane Hill with a clutch 29-yarder to give Kalispell a new set of downs. Of course, they had to get a few more to really end the game, but consistency was nowhere to be found. After converting the third and 19, they were met with third and 10, and this one wasn't even close. Central Michigan was going to have a final chance to go and take the lead. In came Ronnie Lane, the true freshman quarterback for Central Michigan, against the number one ranked team trying to take them down the field. Big first down run there for Ronnie Lane. They still had a long way to go. On this first and 15, the pressure gets there from the blind side. That was Markel Ingram sending Central Michigan backwards. We had them right where we wanted them. On third and 21, Lane stepping up, delivering a huge throw, gave them a chance at converting a fourth down. With the game on the line, Central Michigan put their faith in the true freshman quarterback, and Lane got the conversion, finding Brandon Kilpatrick for a gain of eight. Central Michigan wasn't done, but time was running out. With 24 seconds to go, on a third and nine, Ronnie Lane with a desperation he found Jonathan Ward for a gain of 14. Central Michigan was only a few yards from field goal range. With 14 seconds to go, Ronnie Lane almost threw the game away as DeHonte Jeffries dropped the interception and Central Michigan would be given one more chance. 12 seconds left for Central Michigan, and Ronnie Lane would not make the same mistake twice. Finding a receiver, and Brian Hickman took it inside the 20, setting up a short field goal. Leon Daniels would use all three of his timeouts trying to ice the Central Michigan kicker, hoping for some of that home field advantage magic, and it was not successful. Central Michigan came into Kalispell, 
kept us from finding the end zone and pulled off an upset comeback to knock off the number one ranked team. I could not believe it. I knew Kalispell would be challenged eventually, but I never considered this to be a possibility. In this game, Antoine Morgan took six sacks, ended up with 202 yards. And we began to see some of the faults with this pass-heavy offense as Matthew McNair ran seven times for 73 yards. And who knows how this game would have gone if Kalispell relied on the sophomore running back more. With the Warhawks set to take on Boise State in their third game, renewing that rivalry, I was hoping to see them focus on Matthew McNair and get the offense back on track. On Boise's blue turf, this game would open with Kalispell's defense coming through in a major way, forcing an early turnover and giving the offense a short field. A nice boost after a letdown the week prior. The Warhawk offense looked to start fast. Antoine Morgan completing here inside the 15 to Phoenix Chambers. And a couple plays later, Matthew McNair finding the end zone, running through the middle of the Bronco defense. Kalispell took the early lead and really looked like they wanted to get Matthew McNair involved. All you have to do is get him the ball and he's found a way to make plays. We saw that in his freshman year. Back in Boise territory, great throw to the outside. Morgan very good throwing outside the numbers. That would set up the second Matthew McNair touchdown. Kalispell taking a two score lead. It's exactly what I hope to see. Give the ball to Matthew McNair. But Boise State would respond. They started slow, but look for the big play to get the offense going. This desperation throw to James James gave them 43 yards. And that would set up a Boise field goal. The Broncos were able to get some drives established in the first half, getting some big plays to get them close. But as we've seen throughout the years, the smaller the field gets, the better the Kalispell defense is. On this play, starting quarterback Shane Cannon would suffer an injury and come out of the game. The Broncos ended up kicking four first half field goals that chip away at the Kalispell lead. Antoine Morgan wasn't finished, continuing to show off the arm talent outside the numbers here to Josh Vincent. I love some of these throws Morgan made, but at times he would get too confident and force throws that were not there. This one essentially took points off the board as Kalispell took their two-point lead into the second half. And this Kalispell pass rush kept making plays here against the new quarterback, Curtis Lewis. A big sack fumble with the Warhawks taking over. They would add three more to go up by five. Boise didn't have an answer for the pass rush as again they brought down Curtis Lewis to end the next possession and the Warhawks would get in position to add on to their five point lead. Antoine Morgan again taking a chance and getting intercepted inside the five. Not only are these takeaways, but they're in scoring position. Kalispell remained up five going into the late third quarter and Phoenix Chambers would make one of the biggest plays of the day with a catch and run inside the 15, a 38 yarder, another chance to add on some points. And Kalispell just kept throwing and Antoine Morgan was intercepted once again, this time at the goal line. That's basically nine points at least taken off the board. That's a two score lead that Kalispell didn't have. They relied on Matthew McNair early but then they went away from it, and I didn't understand. And the game plan never really changed from there. They were going to throw the ball, and they would get big plays to get downfield, but it was all about what they do once they crossed the 50. Antoine Morgan, in just his third game, had a four interception performance. All of them on the Boise half keeping the door open for another comeback for the second week in a row. The defense played extremely hard, but with time running out, Boise had to make something happen. And Curtis Lewis would get them across midfield with this throw to Chip Gibson, a 28-yarder. 
After struggling all day, Boise finally got consistent on offense. This run by Ryan Franklin took them inside the 30, but they still had to get to the end zone. On third and six, Kalispell brought the pressure, and Keel Porter brought down Curtis Lewis to bring up a long fourth down for the Broncos, and that would get the ball back for the offense. Could they just finish out the last two minutes and win the game? I couldn't believe they still weren't handing the football off. Morgan Chase lost the football, rolling out of bounds, barely for Kalispell. This wasn't my offense anymore. I just wanted to see them run the ball. And it was so tough to watch this passing game consistently let the team down. On third down and 24, there would be no miracle first down. They were going to give Boise State another chance to go and win the game. And Boise didn't have that far to go. Curtis Lewis just checking down, taking what's there. Boise inside the 25 with around a minute to go. The Broncos simplify what they were doing on offense, just dumping off to the running backs and letting them make plays. Ryan Franklin takes them to the 11, time continuing to run down, and Boise closing in on the end zone. On third and four, they'd get within a yard, and this was ultimately going to come down to a final play. Fourth down to win the game. Curtis Lewis throwing to the end zone, and Boise State gets the game-winning touchdown from Carl Douglas. For the second straight week, a backup quarterback facing Kalispell comes in to deliver fourth quarter heartbreak. And the Warhawks start one and two, two major upsets, and now significant questions about the direction of this offense. How do you only run the ball seven times with Matthew McNair? Especially after Morgan had a four interception day. Over those first three games, Matthew McNair was averaging 10 touches a game. Not enough, if you ask me. Antoine Morgan had three touchdowns and six interceptions, and all those touchdowns came back in week one. A distant memory by this point, after two disappointing losses, games that Kalispell should have easily won. And they were about to face their biggest rivals the week after. The Stanford game could not have come at a worse time. Kalispell, after these two losses, was now unranked. Stanford, at home, was heavy favorites against the struggling Warhawks. And this offense would get off to a fast start behind quarterback Justin Dixon. This is a 38-yarder that went to Austin Jones. And you know against Stanford, you're going to get their power running game. And Ernest Gilbert got off to a good start. Stanford does not try to trick you offensively. You know what they're going to do, and you still can't stop it. Stanford controlled the first quarter, and the way this game started, it looked like it was going to be a long day for the defense. We had no answer for Ernest Gilbert. Luckily, we were able to play good red zone defense to force a couple early field goals to give us time to get in this game and to start being competitive again. And that was up to the offense after scoring 12 points against Central Michigan, 17 against Boise, and it didn't look like anything was going to get better. With all these interceptions, I was wondering if Kalispell was going to consider a change at quarterback. We were asking way too much of our defense in these first few games. Of course they were going to be wore out by Ernest Gilbert and the power running. Here's a 26-yarder, Gilbert up to 127 by the second quarter. Stanford trying to add on to their lead, and again the red zone defense making this game look a lot closer than it really was. At halftime, it would be 9-3 in favor of Stanford, and I felt like it was about to become a blowout before too long. What were we going to do against Ernest Gilbert? Well, he coughed up the football to start the second half. A turnover would certainly help, giving the offense a short field. If they could do anything with it, of course. Antoine Morgan trying to bounce back from all the interceptions and still throwing downfield and attacking the defense. 
He found Derek Jackson to take it inside the 10 and would not force one on third down, allowing Kalispell to at least get a field goal. With Stanford now up by three, they'd go right back to Ernest Gilbert, and he'd lose the football once again on the big hit delivered by DeHonte Jeffries. Known for being a ball hawk and a great returner, that's the biggest hit of Jeffrey's career. Another short field for Kalispell, and hey, they ran the football with Matthew McNair. Still not enough, but I'll take what I can get here. Morgan throwing them inside the five and developing that connection with Derek Jackson. Warhawks get close, and Matthew McNair runs it in for the touchdown. Kalispell takes the lead turning this game around in the third quarter. Suddenly it was Stanford playing catch up, trailing by four in the fourth. Justin Dixon tried to get a big pass downfield and nearly got picked off by DeHonte Jeffries helping this callous spell turn around. And to my surprise, they went for it on fourth and eight and got the big conversion. Stanford not finished. Looking to reclaim the lead, they continued driving. Justin Dixon made some great throws on this possession, taking the Cardinal into the red zone where Kalispell had stopped them on every try prior. But a field goal would not cut it for Stanford. They had to make a play on third down. And on third and seven, it would be Justin Dixon all the way out, finding Mike Dodd, the defense losing track of him, and that is a Stanford touchdown to take the lead. After two weeks of giving up the fourth quarter comeback, now Kalispell had to get one of their own. And thankfully, they'd rely a little bit on Matthew McNair. Antoine Morgan knew he could not make another mistake here, not after the last two games and not with Kalispell within reach of taking this game. Here's a big third and one conversion, squeezing that one into Josh Vincent. They were far more balanced on this drive, getting down the field and utilizing Matthew McNair on some key runs. With under three minutes to go, a wide open throw to Travis Clemens takes them inside the 15. Kalispell wanted to finish this drive, and Antoine Morgan found the wide open man, Travis Clemens, for a big touchdown, giving Kalispell the lead back in the fourth quarter. They had to end the losing streak right here, and to Morgan's credit, he got them down the field to score the go-ahead touchdown. Now could the defense close it out against Stanford, who was still left with two minutes on the clock. After the defense stepped up in the second half, Stanford became much more pass heavy. And they wanted to get the big play, and it would be DeHonte Jeffries with another key takeaway. He had a big forced fumble earlier, now the clutch interception late, helping make up for that dropped interception from earlier. But it wasn't necessarily done at that point. Kalispell still had to run the clock down on third and 12. They keep it in the air and get a huge conversion, allowing them to run even more time off. I didn't want to see Stanford get the football back again, and they wouldn't. Matthew McNair ran the Kalispell Warhawks to a victory, ending the two game losing streak. It turned out to be a very exciting game against Stanford. I had low expectations, but perhaps after those two disappointing losses, Kalispell could still get things on track and make this an interesting year. This brought them to 2-2 two and, two and got them back into the top 25, just in time for a matchup against the Arizona Wildcats. And although Kalispell lost those two games, at least they were out of conference. They were 1-0 in conference, so that was the most important thing at this point. But could they step it up now against Arizona? Matthew McNair once again getting off to a good start, a 13-yard run. I'd see plays like that and hope that we'd get a lot more, but this was still a very pass-heavy team. And there were things they were getting better at, and we'd see more big plays, it seemed, every week. Here's Clemens taking it inside the five. Kalispell looking for that fast start. And again, tossing it out to Matthew McNair. He's scoring the touchdown to put the Warhawks up by six. 
Kalispell's offense started fast, but Arizona's would start even faster. With quarterback Cody Adams completing a catch and run to Eric Vickers for 38 yards. And on a couple plays later, on a long third down in the back of the end zone, that is a Blake Co touchdown, and the game is tied. Actually, seeing some first half touchdowns in this one. On the next possession for Antoine Morgan, this is another interception. It was jumped, and Arizona would get the short field. And they'd pick up right where they left off on a dump off, just a quick touchdown run for Kenny Young. And the Wildcats would take the early lead. Later in the second quarter, with Arizona up 17 to 10, Cody Adams would get too greedy on this pass and was intercepted by Lance Davis. Not quite taking it to the end zone, but giving Kalispell a short field. And that would lead to Antoine Morgan finding Phoenix Chambers for a quick seven yard touchdown to tie this game at 17. It was a little strange seeing all these touchdowns early on, but with the game tied up, the pass rush would make an impact and another interception for the Kalispell defense. It was Griffin on the pressure and a phenomenal athletic play by Terry Sears. Kalispell didn't do anything with it, but that was a pretty sweet play. Still in a 17-17 game, another interception for the Warhawk defense. This time it's the safety Demarcus Williams, now a sophomore. Kalispell with three first half INTs. This defense was pretty fun. And Kalispell would take advantage with a pass to the boundary and a touchdown for Derek Jackson. It was great to see the Warhawks capitalize on those mistakes. But Cody Adams would look to bounce back from the interceptions. Playing it safe, dumping off to open running backs, getting a good catch and run here from Eric Vickers. With Arizona not quite in field goal range on a third and six, that's an easy pitch and catch over the middle, caught by Ricky Simmons. And a few plays later after getting into the red zone, Arizona tying the game on a Ricky Simmons touchdown. 24 all in the first half. And Cody Adams with three touchdowns, three picks, and almost 300 yards at this point. It was already looking like it'd be the highest scoring game of the season. We weren't even halfway finished, and Kalispell wanted to get the lead back again. After dumping it off to Derek Jackson, it's Matthew McNair with a solid run, getting 10 yards. And this would ultimately lead to Kalispell getting to the Arizona 21. And Travis Clemens coming through with a 21-yard touchdown reception. Three touchdowns for Antoine Morgan to match Cody Adams. But hey, the first half still wasn't finished. Arizona got down the field to set up a field goal and thought it was a good time to fake it. I kind of like the call there. It doesn't seem like getting threes are going to be a big deal in a game like this. So I can't fault them for trying to get the six with the tricky fake field goal. Ultimately, there was over 600 yards of passing in the first half with 29 rushing yards. Both teams not really utilizing their running games, but they were putting up a lot of points regardless. Arizona would start the second half and look to reclaim the lead with Cody Adams hitting a big pass outside the numbers to Michael Gardner for a gain of 22. And while in other games we played outstanding red zone defense, Arizona found some holes in our coverage and was able to take advantage. Down by four points on second and goal, they'd finally use the running game and get a score from Eric Vickers retaking the lead 34-31. In this back and forth game, again we have Kalispell trying to keep pace with a big third and seven. I like the call, finding Matthew McNair on the screen pass and he wasn't going out of bounds. He's trying to make the most out of every touch if he's only getting like 10 a game. Three catches for 50 yards by that point. One thing this offense did a lot as well was dump the ball off to Craig Booth and let him run with it. That was a nice 16 yard play. And the offense just looked as good as they had played since week one. It was refreshing to see them move the ball this effortlessly. They would take it down inside the five, and McNair would not get into the end zone. He was stuffed, 
Callus Spell would settle to tie the game at 34. Throughout the game, I was waiting for Callus Spell's defense to step up and make a few more plays, and it just wasn't happening. Arizona driving down the field again, getting into scoring range. With a lot of time on the clock still, Cody Adams crossed the 500 yard passing mark. Arizona would make it goal to go again and switch it up with Adams keeping one and running inside the five to set them up with a close scoring opportunity. This is where Kalispell is normally so good, but they could not prevent the touchdown. And I'm pretty sure they ruled that a forward pass and the fourth touchdown throw for Cody Adams. They broke 40, Kalispell had to do the same. Antoine Morgan was making plays, could he make a few more and help Kalispell get the win? Phoenix Chambers getting wide open, delivering Kalispell a big play. This would get them across midfield. And on a third and two, Morgan rolling right into the pressure, couldn't make a play and that brought up a very critical fourth down. Arizona trying to get their biggest defensive play of the day. And they could not slow down Matthew McNair as he took it down the sideline all the way to the 20. Had to break a tackle in the process, but it was so impressive. Kalispell tried to tie the game up, but almost threw a pick in the end zone. So they'd be faced with another fourth down. And after it worked the first time, they toss it to McNair again. But this time he was stopped five yards shy, not even close. And finally, in this back and forth game, Kalispell could not match Arizona, and they had to get the ball back. At this point, it's hard to overcome a two score game. And Cody Adams kept adding on to his signature performance. The interceptions all happened early in the game. He bounced back from them and kept Arizona's foot on the gas. Again getting into field goal range with this throw to Brandon Turner. Arizona would take it inside the five and Cody Adams would toss in another touchdown to Tyrone Scott. Number five on the day putting him just under 600 passing yards. If Kalispell was to make this interesting it had to be fast. With four minutes left to go, Antoine Morgan finds Phoenix Chambers who twists ahead beyond the 40 yard line and they'd be faced with fourth down again. Tossing it to McNair and coming up shy for the second straight attempt. Ultimately a very high scoring game but Arizona able to sustain their offense a lot longer than Kalispell. With a few seconds to go, They'd close the gap a little bit with a 40-yard Derek Jackson touchdown. But the defense hadn't struggled like this all year. I was shocked they could not get comfortable at any point. And Cody Adams did break the 600-yard mark in a game that featured 1,052 combined passing yards and 92 points. And another loss for Kalispell, sending them to 2-3. I talked about the pass rush being a strength early on. Cody Adams threw the ball 73 times and was not sacked even once. That might be the most impressive pass protection performance in college football history. With three losses already, the national championship was no longer on my mind. Kalispell wasn't even ranked. I just wanted to see them at least recover somewhat and get some wins together so they could compete for a good bowl game by the end of the year. And the next game brought some early winter snowfall. At 2-3, Kalispell took on Washington State on the road and on the opening possession, Antoine Morgan would throw his ninth interception of the season to Jonas Jones, giving Washington State a chance to go up early against the inconsistent Warhawks. On the Cougars' first play of the day, quarterback Myron Guidry got intercepted by Lance Davis, giving Kalispell the football right back, and a second chance essentially for their opening possession. This attempt would go a little bit better, with Antoine Morgan finding Derek Jackson who set Kalispell up inside the red zone, and then Matthew McNair on a screen pass. Put Kalispell on the board for 6-0. 
Despite the early interception by Antoine Morgan, he was able to get comfortable early on, rebounding from the interception, finding Derek Jackson once again for 18 yards. Even playing in the winter elements, Kalispell stuck with their pass first and second approach, barely acknowledging that running the football was even an option. But whatever gets points, that's all I wanted to see. And they go back to the ground game, getting a touchdown from Mark Robinson, putting Kalispell up two possessions early in a big road matchup. From there, how would Washington State respond, trailing by 14-3? Well, late in the first half, Myron Gidry tried to get them in scoring range, hit a big pass on the outside to Chris Newell. A couple plays later, on a third and ten, just a simple screen pass, and Kalispell could have easily made the stop, but a pair of broken tackles from Curtis Johnson gave the Cougars a chance to extend this drive into scoring range. With 40 seconds on the clock, Gidry would get a little greedy on this throw, and Lance Davis collected his second interception of the first half. The Cougars would try again to begin the second half, again driving down the field as Kalispell's pass rush starts to make an impact and Gidry was sacked by Montrell Griffin, sixth sack of the season. That would ultimately force a field goal try and the kick came up very short. Kalispell immediately took over and started to move down the field. They essentially replaced their running game with dump offs to Craig Booth as this 12 yarder was good for his 11th catch of the day with a lot of football to be played. Kalispell would add three with a field goal from Brandon Hammond to go up 17-3. On the following drive for the Cougars, they would again get down the field in the scoring range and nearly threw a third interception to Lance Davis. Washington State would get another chance after the drop pick. This run took them down inside the five. And from there, Myron Gidry throwing to the end zone, got the touchdown to James Nelson to make this a one score ball game. With their lead cut to seven, Kalispell wanted their two score lead back and wasted no time with Antoine Morgan finding Phoenix Chambers downfield for a 75-yard touchdown. A one-play strike. Kalispell went back up by two touchdowns, trying to even their record at 3-3. Three and three. Kalispell's defense played tough throughout the game, especially when Washington State would cross midfield. Montrell Griffin picked up his second sack of the day to bring up a third and long for Washington State. And in the fourth quarter, they had to find a way to make some big plays. On third and 17, they would get one with a pass to the outside for Chris Newell getting 26 yards. Getting down the field wasn't really their issue. It was doing something once they got there. That's where the Cougars were very inconsistent. Good stop there by A.J. Medlock as Kalispell forced the third and ten. And the Cougars would get very close on the check down, but ultimately were faced with fourth and one, basically having to convert or the game is pretty much done. And they'd pick up the conversion, Gidry running inside the ten. Still about eight yards away from the end zone, they'd be faced with a second fourth down try. And this time, they could not convert as Kalispell's defense held tough. And with a 14-point lead, looking to put the game away, Antoine Morgan's big day continued, finding Phoenix Chambers on the outside for a gain of 17. This allowed Kalispell to take it down towards two minutes. And from there, to put the finishing touches on this one, a beautiful touchdown pass from Morgan to Josh Vincent would seal the Kalispell Warhawks' third win of the year, throwing over 50 times in the snow and getting over 400 yards from Antoine Morgan. But before this game was finally over, Lance Davis would have his third interception of the day after all. A great, complete team win for the Kalispell Warhawks, winning 34-18. Lance Davis named player of the game, and I was really happy with the play of Antoine Morgan. Beyond the first interception, he was very, very good. 
Kalispell's passing attack wasn't slowed down whatsoever by this snowfall. Morgan ended up with 427 yards, throwing three touchdowns again. Craig Booth ended up with 14 receptions, Chambers 8 for a buck 50, and this brought the Kalispell record to 3-3. Three and three. They were still outside the top 25. They had to show they could be a bit more consistent before getting those top 25 votes again. So trying to put that 500 first half behind them to make a run in the Pac-12 North, Kalispell was set to take on the Oregon Ducks. Both teams at 3-3 three three looking for that important fourth victory. Kalispell brought in their number one ranked passing offense, but it was Matthew McNair on the opening drive, breaking off a long touchdown to put the Warhawks on the board first with a 27-yard score. Oregon's offense has changed over the years. They're now running an option offense with quarterback Sean Love on their opening possession, breaking some tackles. Here's a long run for Love that would get them 29 yards. The key with these option offenses is forcing them to throw. Kalispell did that with Lance Davis collecting yet another interception. That's four in his last five quarters played. I remember recruiting Lance Davis and knowing that he was going to have a lot of upside after a little bit of development. It was great to see that on display in these games. With the football once again, Kalispell got down the field with a Derek Jackson 20-yard catch. And on third down, spreading out the Oregon defense, it's Josh Vincent breaking the plane that is a Kalispell touchdown. The Washington State game was finally another complete game for Kalispell, and that success really carried over into the matchup against Oregon, getting those early touchdowns and playing punishing defense to take an early lopsided advantage. Another turnover set up Kalispell with a chance to add even more points. And they would do so with Morgan throwing a touchdown to Josiah Jensen, putting the Kalispell Warhawks up. 21-0 in just the first quarter. If the offense and defense could just play up to their potential, there was a great chance for this team to get back on track and recover from three early season losses. Trailing 24 to nothing in the first quarter on their home field, Oregon failed to get anything going. Montrell Griffin picked up his eighth sack of the season. And after driving down the field a bit, A.J. Medlock would collect one, and the Ducks remain scoreless on the day. With Kalispell taking over with a red-hot start, they show no signs of slowing down. With a Derek Jackson touchdown, putting them up 30 to nothing. This one a 62-yarder. And in these recent games, you could really tell that Morgan and Derek Jackson were developing a very good connection. Oregon would eventually score, cutting the Kalispell lead to 31-7, but another Derek Jackson touchdown would bring the Kalispell lead back to 31 points. Morgan threw for over 300 yards with four touchdowns in the first half. In the second half, more of the same, with an interception from Josh Townsend ending another Oregon drive, their fourth turnover of the day. Matthew McNair would follow that up with another impressive touchdown run, putting Kalispell up 44-7. This was the team I expected to see for most of the season. Kalispell was finally playing dominant football once again. And they weren't done making impact plays. Josh Townsend's second pick of the day would be a pick six to extend the Kalispell lead even further. It's hard to say whether it was the offense or the defense that played better against Oregon. Down 52 to seven. It just kept getting worse for the Ducks. Sean Love sacked again by Montrell Griffin. To add on to this impressive showing, Kalispell decided to make some history with tight end Craig Booth and these checkdowns giving him a new record for receptions in a game. That is a Kalispell record, 15 for under 70 yards, basically a running stat line. Oh, and by the way, 
Kalispell would score again. Derek Jackson's 17 yard touchdown would give him three on the day. A five touchdown passing performance for Antoine Morgan. And ultimately, Jackson would have one of the best receiving performances in Kalispell history. Well over 200 yards to this point. Kalispell still was not finished on the day. Matthew McNair fighting through contact. He picks up the first down. And with the third down and eight, Kalispell padding the lead a little bit more. Reggie Williams this time with a 31-yard touchdown. That would put Antoine Morgan into the Kalispell record books, tying Brandon Warren's single game record of six touchdown passes, but setting a new record for passing yards in a game. 66 to seven. Oregon would eventually find another touchdown, but Kalispell put together their most impressive win of the season behind Antoine Morgan's record breaking day. That gave Kalispell back-to-back -back convincing wins on the road where the offense and defense each played exceptional. A two-game win streak finally. Could Kalispell use this momentum to catapult them into the standings to compete for something by season's end? The direction this offense went in wasn't what I expected, but at least at this point it was working. I was starting to see the vision for the offense and all these performances by Morgan showed how good it could be. With two wins in a row, Kalispell found themselves at 4-3, and three, hoping to keep the winning going, now matched up against the Washington Huskies. After playing their best football on the road, Kalispell wanted to put on a show for the home fans. And it didn't take them long to get started with Derek Jackson taking this down to the one. They marked him out of bounds. Almost another touchdown for him and Morgan, who really had this connection going at this part of the season. Matthew McNair capped it off with a quick one-yard touchdown. And on the ensuing possession for the Huskies, it would be Lance Davis once again getting the interception and becoming the newest ball hawk of the Warhawk defense. I love seeing defensive backs constantly get their hands on the football. With the Warhawks taking over, Derek Jackson this time would not step out of bounds. A 33-yard touchdown put the Warhawks up by a score of 14-0. This had Washington pretty desperate to keep the game from getting away from them any further. Marcus Walker hauled in a deep ball, a 35-yard pickup to get the Huskies into scoring position. And then Lance Davis showed he can do more than just collect interceptions, recording the first sack of his season. With a third down and 25 on the edge of field goal range, Montrell Griffin once again picked up the sack, this time on Jeremy Williams. Washington got nothing on that possession. And later in the second quarter, Joe Owens forced the fumble with a monster hit. And the Warhawks got their second takeaway of the ball game. This would lead to Matthew McNair, Running in another touchdown to put the Warhawks up by 21 points. The Warhawks were finally playing some consistent football and spreading the football around to all of their playmakers. Phoenix Chambers had kind of become the number two receiver after Derek Jackson, but he picked up a 30-yarder. And then to close the first half as time expires, Derek Jackson collects another score. Him and Morgan just could not be stopped. I wanted to know where this team was earlier in the year when they were upset twice. Maybe it just took some time to get used to the new scheme and for some of these new players to get some experience. But in this stretch of games, everything was clicking. Kalispell was on the verge of a third consecutive decisive victory, getting great play from both sides of the football. Kalispell would take this late lead into the fourth quarter and of course never took their foot off the gas. With this five yard catch, Craig Booth would break another record. This time, Kalispell's single season mark for receptions in a season previously held by Sherrod Edwards. And we still had so many games to go. 
The Warhawks up by 25, one of a bit more separation with Morgan finding Josh Vincent for a 20 yard touchdown. Another 400 yard day for Antoine Morgan. The fans celebrating the success of Kalispell football and their third straight dominant win, this time by a score of 38 to six. This is one of the best three game stretches I've ever seen from this team, especially at the quarterback position. This made me a very big believer in Antoine Morgan and this offense going forward. Even if we weren't running the football like I wanted them to do a bit more. This put us in a great spot in the Pac-12 North with only one conference defeat. Still, Kalispell wasn't back in the top 25. They did receive votes, but would probably need another win to get there. But over this three game stretch, Kalispell won those games by a combined score of 138 to 38. I don't recall ever seeing anything quite like this from Kalispell for three games straight. So how much longer could this keep up? Could they just keep dominating everybody? A 1-7 matchup against Oregon State had me hopeful that they could, even though the snow was falling once again, this time in Kalispell. The Beavers were looking for a big upset against the team now averaging 370 yards per game. That's just the passing yards, by the way. And Kalispell didn't waste any time. Once again, it's Morgan to Derek Jackson, setting up Kalispell downfield. And ultimately, they would take the first lead with a Dane Hill touchdown. The freshman getting some more playing time. Antoine Morgan's 21st touchdown pass put Kalispell on the board. On their next possession, the Warhawks look to add even more with Josiah Jensen hauling in this 11-yarder. One of the staples of the offense had become this rollout pass to Derek Jackson running a corner route to the outside. Couldn't score the touchdown there. And then Morgan, after almost falling down at the snap, ends up throwing an interception. Very nice play by the defender, keeping it 7-0. But then Kalispell's defense got involved with David Montgomery getting sacked by Terry Sears. Kalispell got pass rush from a lot of different players this year as Allen Johnson picked up another sack to end this Oregon State drive. Kalispell again had the ball inside the five and didn't try to throw it this time. Ryan Thurman, the freshman fullback, ran in another short yardage touchdown. That put the Warhawks up 14-0. Oregon State would take it into Kalispell territory. And then Lance Davis picks up another interception. He did get one foot down here. Another fantastic play. This gave the ball back to the red-hot Kalispell offense. Antoine Morgan on a third down. Perfect throw to the sideline. He connects with Phoenix Chambers. And then after getting downfield, they try to throw it again in the red zone, and Craig Booth would make one of those short yardage catches, go for six, second touchdown of the day for Antoine Morgan. And later in the second, a deep ball right down Broadway for Derek Jackson. Another big connection for him and Morgan this time. It's a 44 yard touchdown. Antoine Morgan with another phenomenal first half and a 28-0 Warhawk lead. Of course, why would they be done there? Craig Booth on a catch and run, took it inside the 10 with this 16-yarder, and then they get Matthew McNair involved, putting the Warhawks up 35-0. For the longest time, I just wanted them to run the football. At this point, Kalispell didn't need to, even in the snow. I've never seen the pass game play this well for this long. Derek Jackson, 52-yard touchdown. I didn't see this big season coming from him. I really thought it was going to be Phoenix Chambers with the big year, but it was a lot of fun to see Derek Jackson really emerge. Both sides of the football stayed on top of their game, with Allen Johnson tying a Kalispell record with four sacks in this game. Already with over 400 yards passing, Antoine Morgan wanted 500. 
Finding Derek Jackson once again. This time it's not a touchdown, but it is 48 yards and a new callous spell record. Just breaking the record he already set a couple weeks ago. 2.59 with time to play. Already up 35. How about a back corner touchdown to Derek Jackson? Three touchdowns on the day. You expect at some point the offense would have to slow down just by default, regression to the mean, something. But for a fourth straight game, it was just a callous spell highlight reel on both sides of the football. And there was still a lot of time to play. Morgan looked to take advantage of that, once again finding Derek Jackson and breaking his one week old record. 516 yards now topped with a quarter and a half to go. This is uncharted territory for Kalispell football to see an offense pass the ball this well. Another six touchdown passing day. We put up so many points, the scoreboard stopped working once again. We've got to get that replaced one of these years, especially if Kalispell keeps putting up points like this. I don't know how Jackson got a foot in bounds, but once again, him and Morgan connect, and more records are broken. Antoine Morgan, now with seven touchdowns, breaks Brandon Warren's record. It's the best passing performance and receiving performance all in the same game. Over 300 yards for Derek Jackson. I hope you didn't think we were done there with the records, by the way. Craig Booth, 19 receptions. This was the new running game. Just dump it off to Craig Booth. He also breaks his own record with Kalispell up 66 to 14. And Derek Jackson would just keep adding on to his already 300 plus yards. And Craig Booth would make it 20 receptions. Why not? At least he got two 100 yards this time. Up 66 to 14. Kalispell wanted 70. And Dane Hill took him down to the one, almost scoring again. This gave Morgan nearly 700 passing yards. So he'd throw for one more. Connecting with Phoenix Chambers, his eighth touchdown pass of the day. It's not the best passing performance in NCAA history, but it's up there. However, in the fourth quarter, Antoine Morgan would take a sack and break a finger on this play. Thankfully, this would not keep him from missing any games, but it gave Robert Moore a chance to finally play. He is the new backup quarterback, and he picked up some yardage with his limited opportunities finding Josh Vincent. Ultimately, Kalispell just kept raising the bar, and they won their fourth game in a row, playing dominant football start to finish, an eight touchdown day for Antoine Morgan with 727 passing yards. Over this four game stretch, Kalispell scored 214 points, averaging 53 and a half points per game. It was their goal to have the number one passing game in the country, and it looked like they were finally there. I still can't believe Derek Jackson had 363 yards receiving in one game, and the defense picked up 10 sacks in the process. That finally got the Warhawks back into the top 25, up to number 23. They had won four games in a row with Antoine Morgan putting up numbers that I thought would put him in the Heisman watch, but he still was not in the top five. He did have 28 touchdowns and 14 interceptions to this point. Matthew McNair had around as many yards as Derek Jackson did in the previous game alone, which gave him, by the way, 1,000 in the first nine games of the season and 11 touchdown catches, easily leading the team. But things were now set to get a lot tougher. Kalispell won all those games against unranked conference opponents, but were now going to meet the second-ranked team in the country at their house undefeated LSU. This is where Kalispell could finally rise in the standings once again. If they wanted to compete for something special, this was a must-win game. 
I wasn't expecting 700 yards again from Antoine Morgan, but how would he in the offense play against a much tougher team? Well, right away you could tell this was a much more difficult matchup, with Kalispell not able to get off to the same fast start they had in the previous four games. They went three and out, which was a big change for them. At the same time, we can't forget that Kalispell's defense had played a lot better, but LSU brought the challenge to them on the opening drive. Brandon Floyd made a 21-yard reception. LSU took it down inside the red zone before Kalispell's defense came up with a big red zone stand. The Tigers would score first, adding a couple field goals in the first quarter, and Kalispell finally got something going with this Matthew McNair screen pass getting them 31 yards, easily their biggest play to this point. Then on a third down and one, Kalispell could not get the conversion, LSU came up big once again defensively, and the Warhawks brought out the field goal team with Brandon Hammond putting them on the board. Later in the first half, with the game tied at 6, LSU with the football, Willie Brown taking off and losing the football on a huge hit, one of the biggest I've ever seen. However, he was arguing that his knee was down, and ultimately that was the case and the call was reversed. LSU able to avoid the turnover, kept possession, and Willie Brown took off once again, bouncing off a defender to pick up 13 and a first down. He ran the ball quite a lot in this game, getting LSU down into field goal range. Again, testing the Kalispell red zone defense. Darren Walker took them down to the one yard line and then would punch it in from one yard out the first touchdown of the day, put the Tigers up 13-6. With the Warhawks offense struggling for the first time in a month, Antoine Morgan hit a big pass downfield that would break another record, this time the single season passing yard mark previously held by Luke Irvin. But the Warhawks wanted more than records, they wanted to get their first touchdown. And Morgan got picked off instead with this off-balance throw. While we did see a lot of big throws in touchdowns, Morgan also did have some bad turnovers. LSU looked to capitalize, but again, Kalispell's defense played really tough. Montrell Griffin tied the sack record with his 16th of the season. And ultimately, LSU would carry a 16-6 lead into halftime. After we didn't see much action on the offensive side in the first half, LSU looked to change that right away in the third quarter, hitting this big throw down to the 20 yard line, again getting into the red zone against the Kalispell defense. This throw and catch would make it first and goal, nice play by David Lindsay. And on third down, Kalispell came up with the big stop. Robert Harris with the tackle on Darren Walker, LSU kicked yet another field goal and turned over this lead to their great defense. The Warhawks look to finally get things on track with Morgan finding Phoenix Chambers for a gain of 23. He would look his way again on third down finding Chambers for a key conversion setting up Kalispell very close to the red zone. On a long third down and 14. Antoine Morgan took his shot to the end zone and Dane Hill was uncovered, giving Kalispell their first touchdown of the day. And while that touchdown felt good to cut into that two score lead, LSU's offense stayed aggressive with Willie Brown finding Robert Whitaker and in one quick play, a 79 yard touchdown basically erased that Kalispell touchdown just seconds prior. This meant that Kalispell had to find a way to keep up with time running out. Down 16 in the fourth quarter, Morgan going back to Josh Vincent now for a gain of 19 yards. A couple plays later on third down, Mark Robinson running straight ahead, getting a conversion with a rare handoff. The offense getting in rhythm again. Of course, you have to have those short dump-offs to Craig Booth for this offense to run smoothly. 
And then on second down and two, Morgan on the rollout, finding Jackson in the corner, a 13-yard touchdown. Jackson's 12th of the season, that's another tied record. However, they weren't done there, they had to get the two-point try. And they tried the rollout again, LSU covered it. And then, coming back to the middle, Chambers made the catch, but a holding call would force Kalispell to try again, backed up. And the dump off to Josiah Jensen did not get the job done. They still had to come back from two scores down. All LSU wanted to do here is run clock down. Willie Brown found Chris McDowell for a 14-yarder. A couple plays later, running inside another LSU first down for running back Darren Walker. Time running out as LSU just continued to work their way downfield getting inside the Kalispell 35 with this screen pass. The defense really had to make a play, but LSU just could not be stopped. Walker got 12 more. That took the game inside four minutes to play. And on third and nine, LSU would pick up their fifth consecutive first down. And that was with their backup quarterback coming into the game. They didn't get the touchdown, but it almost didn't matter because of how much time they took off the clock. This left Kalispell with just a couple minutes to go get two touchdowns. They were able to work quickly, getting down the field, and Josh Vincent took them inside the red zone. They weren't using much time on this drive. And then Morgan found Chambers for the five-yard touchdown. This made it a one-score game but they'd have to, of course, get the onside kick. And the LSU hands team came up with the recovery, which meant Kalispell would now have to get the stop. They failed on the previous drive. With Willie Brown back in the game, he handed off to Darren Walker, who picked up eight yards. All LSU had to do was get a first down to win the game, and their running game was just too much for the Warhawk defense. They were wore down by the time this game came to an end, and LSU ended the big Kalispell win streak with a 32-26 win to move to 10-0. The Kalispell offense wasn't the same going into LSU, and I knew it was going to be a tougher game. I was hoping they could play better than this, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. It also wasn't the only loss of the day. On this late onside kick, it was very easy to miss this happening. Attempting to make the tackle and tearing his ACL in the process was wide receiver Phoenix Chambers. That was his last play of this season and a huge blow to the Kalispell offense. Now going into their last stretch of games, still 5-1 in conference, the conference title game was still in play with a matchup to go still against Cal, but before that, the Warhawks would meet Nevada trying to rebound from this loss to LSU. And the snow just kept following this team. Not quite to Baton Rouge, but once again at home, Kalispell would be playing in the elements, of course, without Phoenix Chambers. And the offense looked a bit lost without him, with Nevada forcing another Antoine Morgan interception on the opening drive of the game. The Wolfpack looked to take advantage, but then Montrell Griffin sat quarterback Brock Field, sending the ball flying behind the line of scrimmage. The Wolfpack kept the football after a 35-yard loss on the record-breaking sack for Montrell Griffin as a redshirt sophomore. He had shattered Maurice Collins' record of 16. Facing a second and 45, you may assume the drive is over there, but not so fast. Damon Green hauled in a 31-yarder to make the third down at least reachable. And on the screen pass, after a broken tackle, the Wolfpack would get the first down. That whole sequence might be more deflating than the opening drive interception. Nevada had it, first and 10 in the red zone, and Demarcus Williams came up with a huge play for the Warhawks, intercepting the option pitch from Brock Fields and taking it all the way for a big Warhawk touchdown. 
this to me was one of the biggest plays of the season and a huge momentum shift when this team needed it. Being able to make it play like that in a situation like that I think is one of the more underrated aspects of great teams. That play seemed to provide the wake up call the Warhawks needed. With Antoine Morgan finding Travis Clemens for a gain of 24, Clemens playing in the place of Phoenix Chambers, and Morgan would find him one more time for a 13 yard touchdown putting the Warhawks up two scores. Kalispell had finally settled into this game leading by 11, but another Antoine Morgan interception would test the resilience of this team with the Wolfpack pick six closing the gap. It appeared Kalispell would only be taking a four point lead into halftime, but Matthew McNair broke off a nice run of 11 yards giving Kalispell a chance to take one shot at the end zone. With time expired in the first half, Antoine Morgan found Josh Vincent who got behind the Wolfpack defense for a 51 yard touchdown. The Warhawks went up by two scores after all. And in the second half, again Antoine Morgan looking the way of Josh Vincent downfield. They connect again for a 48 yard touchdown. Vincent and Travis Clemens were stepping up in the place of Phoenix Chambers as Morgan broke another school record, topping JR Battle's 33 touchdown passes in a season. Nevada had some work to do, trailing by 18, and Robert Harris came up with a big interception. The defense looked like they were back to playing like themselves again after struggling against the LSU offense. With Kalispell in control of this game, they look to add on to their lead, and Wood with a Josiah Jensen six yard touchdown catch. With Morgan approaching potentially the first 40 touchdown passing season in Warhawk history. The offense was back to playing similar football that they played in that four game win streak. Here's one of the best throws from Antoine Morgan. He found Josh Vincent for 31 more. This took him over 170 receiving yards on the day. And with his great speed separating from the defense, Travis Clemens scores again on a third and 25. It took the offense a little while to get going, but they had another big game. As did defensive end Markel Ingram. Both sides of the football stepped up big in this one with Ingram collecting three sacks and recording four tackles for loss. Antoine Morgan would be named the player of the game once again with over 550 yards. And I was extremely surprised that Derek Jackson only had 59, with Morgan throwing the majority of his yardage to Josh Vincent and Travis Clements. This at least gave Kalispell their fifth win in their last six games and would set them up exactly where they wanted to be playing for the division title against number two Cal. Kalispell had only lost one conference game to this point. They beat Stanford. If they beat Cal, they could again play for a Pac-12 championship. And they would be facing Heisman candidate Jeffrey Ramsar in the process. This made for one of the more intriguing senior day games in a long time with Kalispell breaking out the all blue uniforms in their biggest game of the season. Matthew McNair would get them off to a strong start with an 11 yard run. I thought without Phoenix Chambers getting McNair more involved made a lot of sense. McNair took them inside the red zone and the Warhawks look to cap this possession off with Morgan on the rollout, finding Josh Vincent for the touchdown, a fast start for Kalispell at home. On their next possession, Kalispell would again take it into Cal territory, with Craig Booth rumbling ahead getting close to a first down. The Warhawks look to go up by two scores quickly, and Derek Jackson came away with a one-handed catch to set them up in the red zone for a second drive. Morgan began the day 13 of 13, playing much better in the first quarter this week. Kalispell scored a field goal to go up 10 and made it really tough for Jeffrey Ramsar to improve his Heisman case. 
The Bears struggled early on offensively with Kalispell not allowing them to get any drives established. How much of an early lead could the Warhawks build up? Already up 10 to nothing, a big interception gave the Bears their biggest play to this point. The Bears hoped that turnover would be the start of them turning the first half around. But the Warhawk defense picked up another stop in response. Kalispell took over and tried to put the interception behind them. Again getting the football out to playmaker Matthew McNair. Once he gets the football, good things tend to happen. 39 yards on this impressive screen pass. This put Kalispell in scoring position once again, and Dane Hill would take them inside the 10. Kalispell was primed to go up by potentially three scores. And on second and goal, Antoine Morgan threw his second pick of the half, this time at the goal line, trying to force a pass out to receiver Travis Clemens. Cal looked to add their first points of the day and finally got a big conversion with Steven Young hauling in this 11-yarder. For the first time, Cal was in scoring position, but Montreal Griffin would sack Jeffrey Ramsor to back them up and make the field goal a lot more challenging. A 57-yard try came up short, and Kalispell was still pitching the shutout, but only with a 10-point lead. They look to potentially add more before halftime, and Morgan this time did find Travis Clemens. A 52-yard connection would get them close. On third and goal, Cal came up with the stop, and the Warhawks only got three out of this. With one second remaining, Cal got one chance at the end zone. Jeffrey Ramsor would get it there, and the Warhawks ended the first half still keeping Cal off the scoreboard. However, at the same time, Kalispell didn't maximize their scoring chances. They held Jeffrey Ramsor to only 48 passing yards in the first half, which led Cal to change their game plan right away in the third quarter, relying on Ramsor's running ability and the option game. They'd also use the element of surprise, with offensive lineman Todd Smith getting a carry, lining up at fullback, and rumbling through the Warhawk defense for a 33-yard run. This was Cal's best drive of the day, and Jeffrey Ramsor would get them on the board finally, finding Stephen Young for a 12-yard touchdown catch. Cal had finally made this a ball game. With the Warhawks up by six, Morgan stayed aggressive, finding Derek Jackson downfield. He took it down inside the 10 with a 55-yard catch. From there, it was running back Matthew McNair once again, scoring easily. A quick answer for Kalispell to go back up by multiple scores. After Cal put together their best drive of the day, Kalispell would respond with more tough defense adapting to the option game. Once they took that away, Cal had a very tough time making plays. Kalispell got the football back with the fourth quarter approaching. I just wanted to see them take their time and get down the field. And Derek Jackson got them out to a good start with this nice 14-yard catch and run. Morgan kept dumping it off, this time to Craig Booth, who got them another first down pickup. And the final play of the third quarter, again throwing for Craig Booth. This would take Kalispell inside the Cal 30 and gave them a chance to add on to their two-score lead to begin the fourth quarter. The Warhawks kept with the game plan with Craig Booth hauling in his third first down catch of the possession to set up goal to go. Cal would ultimately force third down with Kalispell trying to find the end zone and again Morgan took a really bad risk, got intercepted and this would ultimately put points on the board for Cal, another huge interception, a game changing pick six, we were back to a one score game. After possibly the biggest missed opportunity of the season, 
Kalispell went three and out, giving Cal a chance to just drive down the field and potentially take the lead. This left the game up to Heisman candidate Jeffrey Ramsor, who found Dustin Walton for a gain of 11. Cal also relied a lot on Jeffrey Ramsor making plays himself, gaining eight for a big first down. And keeping once again to set up Cal inside the 15. However, this hit would force Ramsor out of the game and brought in backup quarterback Mark Thompson. He tried to keep it, he took a hit from Joe Owens, and then he had to come out of the game. Cal had suddenly lost their top two quarterbacks, so what happened next? Jeffrey Ramsor grabbed his helmet and he came back onto the field for third down and seven. On the biggest play of the day, Jeffrey Ramsor ran in the touchdown that gave Cal their first lead of the day and completed their two touchdown comeback in the fourth quarter. An incredible moment for Jeffrey Ramsor. Kalispell found themselves trailing by one and then Morgan threw his fourth interception of the day. The interceptions were the biggest problem for this team. The fourth quarter continued to unravel with Jeffrey Ramsor pitching outside and getting a big pickup from Alex Francis. Following that play, it was Dustin Walton taking Cal inside the five. We only had three and a half minutes to play in this game and Ramsor would keep it himself again finding the end zone for a six yard touchdown, putting Cal up by eight. Suddenly the Warhawks found themselves in desperation mode after the four interceptions from Antoine Morgan. They had to get down the field. Derek Jackson had the ball ripped away and almost gave Cal their fifth takeaway. They had to find a way to get the touchdown. Morgan looked Jackson's way once again with this throw, taking them inside the Cal 40. Kalispell continued to drive down the field. Matthew McNair on another screen pass, took them down inside the 10, out of bounds inside the 5. I love seeing McNair used more as a receiver. And on first and goal, Mark Robinson got them in the end zone to make this a two-point game. They got the touchdown. Could they get the two-point conversion? The go-to play for Kalispell was the rollout pass from Morgan, and Cal played it perfectly, knowing exactly what Kalispell wanted to do. This meant Kalispell had to get the football back from Jeffrey Ramsor and the offense. A sack from Montrell Griffin would force them into a third down and long, and Ramsor did not test this defense settling underneath, ensuring Kalispell would get the football back. All the Warhawks needed was a field goal. Derek Jackson made a tough catch, getting them eight yards and breaking the single season record for receiving yards. This brought Kalispell to a critical third and two, and Morgan's pass was dropped by Derek Jackson. It would have easily been a first down, but then forced Kalispell to go for it on a fourth and two, and they did not get it. Cal stuffed Ryan Thurman on the fullback dive to seal their win over Kalispell. An unbelievable come from behind victory led by Jeffrey Ramsor. It was a signature fourth quarter for him and massive heartbreak for the Kalispell Warhawks. They had fought so hard after those early season losses put them in a two and three hole. They were playing some of their best football and came up just a little bit short against both LSU and Cal. This one really hurt because Kalispell should have won the game. The interceptions proved to be costly and Derek Jackson dropped one of the only balls of the season for him. It's not a very easy way to lose a ball game. This got Jeffrey Ramsor closer to winning the Heisman Trophy, but ultimately, Tennessee quarterback O.J. Cole came away with the Heisman Award with his 37 touchdown passing season. 
Kalispell finished the regular season 7-5 with a lot of All-Americans, especially on the defensive side of the football. Derek Jackson's play got him named a second-team All-American. Antoine Morgan had 38 touchdown passes to go with 21 interceptions. And the Kalispell Warhawks had two 1,000-yard receivers. And had Phoenix Chambers not gotten hurt, he might have been the third. The Warhawks had some impressive standouts defensively, led by Montrell Griffin's 19 sacks and Lance Davis with his seven interceptions. Kalispell was no longer ranked, and their season would finish as underdogs to TCU in the Alamo Bowl. Kalispell wanted to find a way to finish this season positively, even if they weren't competing for the Pac-12 title as they hoped. Both teams entered with 7-5 and five records, and TCU's strong pass defense wanted to make a statement against this Kalispell passing game. On the first possession of the ball game, Morgan found Derek Jackson for a 12-yard reception to add on to his record-breaking season. And then Craig Booth would not just break a Kalispell record, but setting the all-time NCAA record for receptions in a season, with some time to add on to that. Morgan then on third and five got rushed and could not complete the pass as Kalispell was forced to punt. TCU started their offensive day with quarterback George Watson flipping this out to Ricky Griffin for a first down run. TCU would pick up another first down with a George Watson run, getting them into Kalispell territory. A couple plays later on third down, Kalispell came up with the stop. This brought out the field goal team for TCU and they would score the first points of the Alamo Bowl. Kalispell tried to get their offense going with Matthew McNair getting a big pickup running inside for 13 yards. It was kind of strange to see just a basic handoff from this team. Josh Vincent got them close for another first down. This brought up a third down in inches where TCU would get aggressive. Linebacker Roy Potts sent on the blitz ended the Kalispell drive. TCU's defense came in wanting to prove a point, and they did that in the first half, intercepting Morgan later in the second quarter to set up their next scoring chance. TCU wanted to open up their lead, but on second and goal, Montreal Griffin picked up his 20th sack of the season. This forced TCU to settle for their second field goal. And then Kalispell knew it was time to run the football with Matthew McNair. 29 yards on this big play. TCU forced another tough third down with Kalispell on the edge of field goal range. Mark Robinson got them to around the 40, and that brought out Brandon Hammond. He's been such a great kicker for a long time at Kalispell and drilled this long field goal to make it 6-3. Kalispell got the football back later in the second quarter, and Antoine Morgan found wide receiver Derek Jackson for a 15-yard catch. When they were faced with another long third down, it was time to go back to Matthew McNair, who picked up big yardage on the screen pass all the way inside the 20, setting up Kalispell with their first red zone trip of the day. On first down and goal, Antoine Morgan floated to the back of the end zone, finding Josiah Jensen, first touchdown of the day and a Kalispell lead. With halftime approaching, TCU got a bit more aggressive with this big pass out to Phil Harrell that went for a gain of 28. TCU quickly made their way across midfield and a big screen pass of their own would convert a third and seven. The Warhawk defense forced them into another tough third down, needing 13. They didn't get it, but they got close enough to try another field goal. Both defenses played very tough in the first half, and TCU's third field goal would make this a 10-9 game at halftime. In a season that really revolved around the play of the offense, it was now a defensive battle in the season finale. 
TCU opened the second half with their passing attack, getting them across midfield. Trevor Bullock called in a 16-yarder. George Watson then found wide receiver Phil Harrell for a gain of 16 yards. And TCU's offense just kept driving down the field, taking it all the way inside the 15 with this Larry Watkins reception. TCU wanted the touchdown on second and goal and nearly threw it away with A.J. Medlock dropping into coverage and almost coming up with the interception. This gave TCU one more chance, but they still could not get the touchdown against this tough Kalispell defense. TCU still added the field goal to take the lead. Trailing 12 to 10, Antoine Morgan again found his favorite receiver, Derek Jackson, for a first down. Kalispell also started the second half very fast offensively. Travis Clemens got them close to a first down and brought up a third down in inches. And then Matthew McNair would convert easily with a big 17-yard run. TCU would eventually force third down and goal and stuff the fullback dive of Ryan Thurman, forcing Kalispell to settle. The field goal gave them a one-point lead. The ball went back to TCU, and the Kalispell defense almost got a big takeaway, getting to George Watson outside the pocket. They forced the tough third down in 10 and came up with the stop, with the third quarter coming to a close. Kalispell led by one to begin the fourth quarter. Antoine Morgan knew he had to protect the football better this time around as he found Derek Jackson for a gain of 14. And on a third down and seven, hit the underneath pass to Josh Vincent for another conversion. Kalispell got into a third down and one. And on the rollout pass, once again, Morgan came through, finding Vincent who took it down inside the five. Kalispell just a few yards away from opening up this lead. They wanted to run this in for the touchdown, but McNair couldn't get there. Mark Robinson was stopped on the next play. And on third and goal, they try it again, and TCU came up with the stop. Both defenses wanted to win this game for their team. Kalispell added another field goal to go up 16-12 and then got to George Watson, sacking him for a loss of four. That was Allen Johnson's third of the day. They forced a tough third down and wouldn't let TCU get anywhere close. Rich Perkins stopped by Terry Sears. This got the ball back to Kalispell, trying to increase this lead. Matthew McNair picked up eight and a key first down as Kalispell ran the clock down. But the TCU defense would respond with a huge sack of Antoine Morgan by Ronald McTaggart. With Kalispell facing a tough third and 14, Morgan tried to make the big throw downfield but was denied, giving TCU another chance with two and a half minutes to go. But they struggled to find anything that could work for them. Kalispell was playing one of their best defensive games of the season. And on third and 10, they came up with the stop. And TCU, despite needing the touchdown, elected to punt, trying to get another big stop from their defense. Kalispell was going to have a chance to run this clock out after a good return by Travis Clemens. TCU trusted their defense to get the stop. On the dump off to Clemens, Kalispell would get to within three yards of the first down. This brought up the biggest play of the day, and Kalispell tried their best to mix up the play call and showed something new, but TCU was ready for the sweep to Jackson. They would get another chance on offense. But there was a long way to go against this Kalispell defense. TCU was left with under a minute to go and found themselves with fourth and the season in front of them. The Warhawks only needed one more play and forced the errant pass from George Watson. If that throw was accurate, there was a lot of running room, but Kalispell sealed their Alamo Bowl victory. It was one of the most unique games of the season, a defensive battle with only one combined touchdown. 
The Warhawks, despite their struggles in close games throughout the season, found a way to win this one. Allen Johnson was named player of the game with his three sacks and he had forced that errant pass on fourth down that won the game. Antoine Morgan finished his season and his Kalispell career with a 315 yard performance. Matthew McNair ran for 74 yards on the ground and the team's leading receiver was Josh Vincent. Oddly enough, after the injury to Phoenix Chambers, Derek Jackson didn't get as many catches or yards as I expected he would. Overall, Kalispell finished Season 15 with an 8-5 record. And of course, in those five losses, there were so many games that they were close to finding a way to win. Despite the disappointing 8-5 record by Kalispell standards, it was still an extremely fun season, a very challenging one at the same time. This year was full of surprises, some good ones, some bad ones, a lot of big plays, exciting moments, a ton of broken records. This season pretty much rewrote the record books for Kalispell football, at least on the offensive side. I love seeing the big breakout of Derek Jackson with his 1,300 yard season. And for the defense, this was another great Kalispell defense and we've had a lot of them in the series. Of course, the big surprise this year was the breakout of redshirt sophomore Montrell Griffin going from just playing a handful of snaps as a freshman to a 20 sack record breaking season. Lance Davis was also a redshirt sophomore, breaking out with his seven interception season. And then the senior linebacker, Joe Owens, he had six forced fumbles. Kalispell graduated another great class of seniors, and Montrell Griffin decided one year was enough. He declared for the NFL after his 20 sack sophomore year. Mark Hill Ingram also declared early as a junior. And that is where our story today comes to an end. The 15th year of Kalispell football was unlike any other. And it's now been six seasons since Kalispell's last national championship. Will Kalispell ever climb the mountaintop again? I suppose that's a story for another day.